Let's go back to John 10. You enjoying yourself tonight? Yeah. Man, if you're not, I am. I'll give you. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now get ready, because we've all known a bunch of hirelings. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Now what we've done with verse 12 is we've ignored the fact that once in a while we're the hireling. <laughs> we ignore that. And what we do is we go straight to that wolf passage and tell people, listen, you keep listening to these wolf preachers, you're going to lose your salvation. You want to know why you're going to lose it? Because look at the last part of the verse. The wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. You want to know what's going to happen when the wolf gets a hold of you? You're not going to be part of the flock anymore. You want to know what happens when you keep listening to the message and the song of the wolf? He's going to snatch you up and pluck you right out of the flock of the family of God. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah. That's how I used to would have preached that. So, man, you will watch out for the wolf preachers. Them wolf preachers that come in sheep's clothing be wolves. The point of the verse is not that people are wolves. The point of the verse is you've got a bunch of people who will abandon you to the wolf because they don't introduce you to the door. Because the door is the way you get away from the wolf. The door is entrance into everything God has for you, and the only way in is Jesus. And if you'd introduce people to Jesus, they could escape the wolf. Whoever the wolf is, whatever the wolf is. And in case you want to know what the wolf is, everyone who came before me is a thief and a robber. I'm the door, Jesus says. But I don't want to just leave that there. What if they're right? What if, if you hang out long enough near the wolf, he's going to swallow up your salvation and you were saved one week and lost the next. And you need to come up here tonight and rededicate your life to the Lord, get resaved. Because you've been hanging out with the wolf. And bless God, it's easy then to go plowing through five nights of revival identifying all the wolves. What they look like, what they sound like, how they act. When what you could have done was just kept reading John 10. Because if you kept reading John 10, Jesus circles the wagons right back to the whole wolf passage in regards to how they get snatched up. Because the word that he uses in verse 12 when he says the wolf catches the sheep is a Greek word, harpazo. Harpazo is the word that is to snatch or to catch away. It's the word the Apostle Paul uses to describe the euphoria of a revelation we have in Jesus in that we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, caught up to meet Him as He is. Jesus uses it. And do you want to know where else Jesus uses it? Look at John 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They know me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch, catch, harpazo them out of my hand. Look at that. What did he warn you about in verse 12? He did not warn you about the wolf in verse 12. He warned you about the hireling. Please, hear me. I'm going to say this again. You were not warned about the wolf in verse 12. Because if you're warned about the wolf, all you're doing is scared you're going to lose your salvation. You were warned about the hireling. The hireling is the one that points you to something not called Jesus and calls it good. Don't worry about the wolf. You want to know why? Because verse 28, I give them eternal life. They never perish. No, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. No wolf gets to catch my people. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Yes. No wolf gets to catch my people. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. Verse 29. And no one, he doubles down, no one is able to harpazo them out of my hands. No wolf. Nobody. I'm the good shepherd, he says. I'm not scared of no wolf. That wolf can't get you. I hold you. My eternal life is your life. I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. But what about the wolf? The wolf can't snatch you out of his hand. 
no one can snatch you out of his hand. Let me tell you something. I am far more concerned in the church with hirelings that are keeping you away from the door than I am the wolf of the world. Because the wolf of the world can't snatch you out of his hand. Jesus doubled down, told you he couldn't. This world's got nothing on you. You're resurrected people. But the problem is, is we're not being led to the table that is green grass and still waters. We're not being led to the table that is Jesus. Because too often we have a hireling who's a thief and a robber that's stealing away from us the very essence of who Christ is. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Pastor, what should we do with this? Go to the door. Go to the door. He stands at the door to the church at Laodicea, and he knocks. And he says, open the door, I'll come in, step with you and you with me. That's not let me into your heart. This is fascinating to me. We've preached Jesus is standing at the door of your heart knocking. He wants to come in and be the Lord and Savior of your life. And the only place in the Bible that Jesus is knocking on the door is not to sinners. It's to the church. The seventh church of Asia in Revelation 3. There are, they're his church. So what's he knocking on the door for? Because he wants to remind you the way to intimacy is the door. You, you, you can get lost thinking the way to, to what you're supposed to be doing is building big buildings and what you're supposed to be doing is growing and what you're supposed to be doing is having bigger budgets and what you're supposed to be doing is influencing politicians and setting Supreme Court justice. What you're really supposed to be doing is intimacy with me. I'll eat with you, you'll eat with me. Just open a door, come in and out and find pasture. Everything else, a thief and a robber. We're being thieved, we're being robbed and stolen from by political thinking, ideological thinking, social thinking, yeah. governmental thinking. We've, we've thought that our answer is get the right politicians, get the right senators, pass the right laws, do the right thing. Christ is the door. Jesus is our answer. Everything, everything else is a thief and a robber. Right. Everything else will take the life right out of you and suck it dry until you walk into the church and leave more depressed than you walked in. Tired, worn out, beat up, taking sides, trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong. And there's Jesus standing there going, I'm the door. I've always been the door. I got fresh bread. Who wants some? Ignore the hireling. Quit getting scared of the wolf. No man snatch you out of my hand. Don't worry about the wolf. What I want you on guard for are people who won't let you in. Yeah. Watch out. You get to the end of that message and they go, this guy's got a demon. Right. So if you get to the end of this message and you go, this guy's got a demon, <laughs> I could do worse. At least I'm landing near Jesus. truth of the matter is, is I just want you to see Jesus as the door, the hope for eternal life, present life, not excluded. Do you hear that? Present life, not excluded. You get to live his life now.